See, when at work loves me, I make the job fun. They say that. I make the job Does, fun. So if I asked everyone in your office, everyone would say that? No, some people are a bit worried. There's a guy that just come back from Queensland and he walked in. I said, oh, God, look at your tan. It looks fantastic. And everyone told me that was racist. Why? Because he's Indian. Every evening in Australia... What is happening? More than four million of us choose to spend the night in front of the telly. Those people mm. should be slapped. Don't you think it's a little bit OTT? But have you ever wondered what other people are watching? <laughs> I think you know the answer. <laughs> Find out what people thought about what was on in the last seven days. Yeah! OK, do not talk. This is intense. It's pretty exciting stuff, isn't it? Oh, yeah. This week, we got dancing tips from TV's number one renovation show. Da, 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 da. Shut up! But we really got moving with The Bachelors in the season premiere of The Bachelorette. I've done, like, three nervous poos already. <laughs> <laughs> Security! And the case of John JonBenet Ramsey... It's obvious that there's a cover-up. ..stopped us cold. Oh, my God. It gives me chills. While Mick and Di are holidaying in Tuscany, Viv and Zena can't wait for their next mini-break. I'm really looking forward to our... Oh, romantic getaway. Mm -hmm. We've got to sort out the music situation when we go oh for the my God, our you're road right. trip. We can't exactly drive in silence. No, and be... we talk a lot already in general. We've got to save it for when we actually get there. Yeah, we should like not talk to each other all <laughs> week <laughs> and just like and just save it, <laughs> save it. <laughs> On Wednesday night, the block approached the midway point of its twelfth season. The block. Oh, it's block o'clock. I love the block. It's time to get back to the block. Oh. 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 This episode starts with yet another skirmish between Dan and the two men who are four men. Keithy's found a problem. Found a problem. So what do you put down? A dozen sheets? Yeah. They all need to come up. Uh, I could. I should be a foreman. I walk around like that. No. <laughs> not good enough. No. Right. I'm not happy. No. <laughs> I think they'd let me do it with a cocktail glass. <laughs> no. But the fight with Keith and Dan was nothing compared with Dan's upcoming fight with Will. Everyone's wrapping up for the night. Is that a gun? Sounds like Dan and Carlene's tradies forgot to clock off for the night. Someone's using a collated screw gun. <gasps> Ooh. Why is that a big deal? What's a collating gun? Who cares? One of the rules on the block is no power tools after 6pm. Will's heard it too. That's a big no-no. <sighs> So apparently this is the drama of the day. I like to basically dob them in. Dibi dibi dobba. We've got some uh, video footage. I hate dobbers. You would be down there in a flash. I know, I'd be sending you down to dob. <laughs> First, Will wants to dob on Dan to form and Keith. Yeah, let's see they dob him in. If anyone will, will, will. Will, will. Yeah, if anyone will, will can. Mm. I'd like to put in a noise complaint from last night. Um, I still don't know what room they're doing. Have you got um, some physical evidence of this? Sure do. What have you got? I've got a video. Oh. <laughs> I like Shelly's jacket. That's been my highlight today of the block, Shelly's jacket. The other drama in this episode revolves around Julie yeah. and Sasha. I'm sorry, I can't even think. I'm so overwhelmed. OK, no. so my God, nervous breakdown is about to happen. Everything about the block, I find it really, really hard. I agree, totally agree with that. This is where we're at, five weeks in. I feel like I'm watching Dr Phil. Julia decides to leave the block for a few days for some R&R. &R. What's R&R? &R? Uh, relaxation and... Root. <laughs> oh, here we go again. It's hard without her because, you know, you have no one to talk to. <laughs> she's not dead. She's yeah, just she's having a rest. Back. There was real. Someone was working. Working. Before long, it was back to Will and Dan. So I've called a meeting. <sighs> Whoa, we're here with him again. After speaking to his foreman, Scott Cam gathers four men. Uh, thanks for coming down, Dan. To formulate a plan about whether to ban Dan after Will's collated footage of a collated gun being used by Dan's man on his phone cam was shown to Scott Cam. Order in the car. Or whether they should let him off scot free. They use power tools for five and a half hours. Why is this even a thing? So, $1,000 fine, Dan. Scott's lenient punishment does not go down well with Will, because if anyone will feel ill will over the minimal drill bill... Will, will. Will, will. Yeah, we, all, we actually all think that's unfair. Well, what do you want them to do, drain their blood? <laughs> <laughs> it's the fucking...
Black and Block, it's not a murder case. When the block returned on Sunday night, the collated gun drama escalated. The collated screw gun strikes yeah. again. Oh, here we go with the tools again. You sure it's a collated screw gun? Absolutely. Screw oh, for God's sake. Pew, pew. But, of course, it wasn't all dobbing drama. With the room reveals coming up, there was also dancing. Boom, in the end, no amount of dobbing could stop Dan and Carlene. Look at the, the candle they've chosen. Wow. Yeah. That's it's a it. hot candle. I thought it was a renovation show, not a bloody candle purchasing show. Dan and Carlene! <laughs> Maybe it's because he had that five and a half extra hours. And this week's jumps, the young guns, Will and Carly... Do it, I was sucked in. You have now passed the halfway point. They're only halfway. Woo! On Thursday night, Lee celebrated her birthday. 55 today. Cheers. Cheers. Happy birthday. Thank you. <sighs> now, that's medication for you. Passion Gossips. pop. Was it, was it? Passion pop. We had it at the wedding and I've loved it ever since. Jesus. Looks like hit and miss to me. They then settled back to watch Find My First Love. Do you know what it's about, Matt? No. This is like find my family, but not oh, my first love. Yeah. All too often we realise that we've met the one only after we've lost them. Do you no think you've lost the one? Every time. Those what ifs that can follow us for a lifetime. What if you had the chance to find them again? Would you be jealous if I went looking for my first love? Yeah, it's fair no. enough. Look for mine. I've met your first love. He was a moron. You're my first love, and my only love is still my love. Yes, but you weren't mine. 25-year-old Sarah wants to rekindle a summer romance with the Australian adventurer, John Bailey. Oh, my God. Oh, I want to find him too. I think he was my first love too. Oh, he's cute. I'd like to meet his dad. <laughs> Looks like me. Now I've come to town to help Sarah find John. So she's like a detective that links rekindles love. To begin, Cherry meets Sarah to get the lowdown on backpacking barman John. He was like, well, you know, my shift just ended. Would you mind if I sat and had a drink with you? And I was like, sure. He... Wonder how many girls he's been saying that to. Mm. Let me tell you, if he was an Aussie backpacking, he's had about 32 first yeah. loves. I was actually leaving for the summer. I had one week in between oh. when he was, <laughs> I know. That's just called sexual attraction. It does not mean they're the one. It means you just get a little Minge twinge. The last time we talked was three years ago. Did you think of grabbing his number or grabbing his email? Well, even, wouldn't you be friends on Facebook? A few months ago, I looked him up on Facebook and it looked like he deleted it and doesn't have one anymore. Oh, there we go. He blocked you, girl. John O'Bailey found him. Look, I found him. One search. Should have come to us. He probably has a LinkedIn profile. I was thinking LinkedIn as well. John Bailey, LinkedIn, done, found him. You've just found him. Yep. I have a team of private investigators and a hacker. Oh, that's great. So you're illegally going to hack into people's stuff? My hacker, as in my 14-year-old brother who's really good at Google. I was able to find a P.O. box at St. Leo's College, which is a residence hall at Queensland University. That is a good lead. Armed with this information, Cherry puts Sarah on a plane to Australia. First stop, Queensland University. Even if he did like her, he's not going to like her anymore because this is creepy. I would never do such a crazy thing, would you? Why not? For love. Hi. Hey, can I help you? I am actually looking for someone who uh, went to school here. Has she even thought about what she's going to do when she finds him? What if he's already settled down with a family? Is she going to go all Adele on his ass and be like, oh, I haven't found anyone like you. Take me back. Staff confirmed that John did, in fact, attend the university. And coincidentally, a couple of his old mates are in the gym right now. Chris, how are you? Chris? Simon. Simon, nice, nice to, meet to meet you. How set up is this? He's hot. 
book me on a flight tomorrow. I'm going to the fucking gym at Queensland Uni. I actually uh, dated John a couple years ago. Oh, um, really? Is dated a stretch? Because it was a week? And I am just trying to <laughs> track him down. Does she not hear what she's saying? Uh, so you're just randomly hunting him down? Yes. Okay. I'm a stalker. Yeah, stalker alert. He might have ran away from this bird. Mm. I think she's a psycho. You know, like the movie with Michael Douglas. Fatal attraction. I don't really have a number to give to you, but just because yeah. he randomly calls me from wherever mm. he is. Right. But I'm here, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> me too. <Yeah. laughs> Disappointed but not deterred, Sarah checks in with Cherry. My hacker Michael expanded the search to all of Europe. There's a John Bailey in Norway. At the... Shut up. He's been spreading his seed all over the world. So we're going to f Norway? Oh, we're going to fucking Norway because guess what? We found a John Bailey and he's apparently the only John Bailey in Europe. <laughs> Trondheim is really tiny. How many gorgeous Australians can live here? What, they're going to put a flyer out like a dog? Hey, have you seen this guy? No, he's a poster boy. Have you seen... <laughs> that bitch needs to be arrested. You know this guy? Yeah. What? I think he went to school with some of my friends. Oh. Oh. Coincidentally. I think he works as a bartender now. Wow, that's a one in a million shot. Sarah heads back to her hotel to get ready while Cherry lines up the meeting. Um, are you John Bailey? Yeah, so who are you? You're John Bailey. Oh, it's him. Woo! Gotcha. Who is the person looking for me? He's a proper dreamboat, isn't he? He's <laughs> silly. I would actually travel the world for him as well. My worry is that you won't remember who she is. Will you meet me in two hours? At the police station. <laughs> There's going to be a glass between the two of you. <laughs> Oh, oh, he bought flowers. He's no, romantic. he did. It's so set up. No, it's, it's romantic. So set up. Oh my god, this is gonna be so awkward. He sees. He goes. We need to let you have the asylum. Done. Sarah. <laughs> what? Oh, he remembered uh, the name. Yeah, because the producer said it. It's like the weirdest thing yeah, that's ever happened to you. Yeah, it's great. It's such yeah. a remarkable thing. There's a few. <laughs> Dragon, they'll get together and be happily ever after. I don't think so. I think John's probably pretty happily ever after a couple of nights a week. <laughs> two months later, here we go. What's the communication like between you two now? Well, we're friends on Facebook again. All that for nothing. Nothing. And we'll definitely, definitely meet up without a question. That she was... travelled more looking for him than what she spent time with him. That is one of the most bizarre shows I've ever seen. I feel like this show would have been interesting in the 90s, before the internet was around. Yes. <laughs> See this? This is the very first professional photo that I ever took. You look like Chucky. <laughs> oh, I'm frightened. Welcome to season two of The, the Bachelorette. Bachelorette. Hot on the heels of The Bachelor. This week we were back for more yeah. with The Bachelorette. This is a bit much to finish it one week and then push the other one the next week. We need a break. No, you need to go straight into no, it. No, I reckon I need you need a break. Recover from that decision. Yeah. Looking for love is the latest single lady, Georgia. I'm 27 years old, living in Tasmania. What does she expect? How's she going to find love in Tasmania? Everyone's related to everybody. I'm a journalist. So I work in TV news. It's no secret our state is one of a kind. Do you reckon they talk to you like that at home? <laughs> Darling, in the fridge, on shelf two, is the milk. <laughs> but I've quit my job and my career to be the bachelorette. Big move, man. Don't quit your job for a man. Well, not one man. 20 men. Ready to find that one that I love forever. Here we go. Rolling up to meet Georgia is a stream of eligible bachelors. Oh, hello. Including <laughs> Fireman Cameron. Come on, baby, light my fire. You're very tall. Aren't you? <laughs> There's always a bloody firefighter who's six foot five. Yeah, right. Next is Carlos. Is he an actor? Is a businessman? Up himself. This guy looks Italian. <laughs> My name is Carlos. Carlos. And I'm a business mogul. A mogul? <laughs> What's that? Short for wanker. And on weekends, I like to get on stage and take my clothes off. Oh, and he's a stripper. Sit down. Whoa. 
These men are my worst nightmare. Oh, and those women are my worst nightmare. I've seen him twice at two <laughs> hen's nights. He was the star of the show both times, and I have not forgotten him. <laughs> Got a little present for you. Wow. Oh, it's your bracelet. Mum, it's that. Oh, and he buys us something from Tiffany's. He's a keeper. Well, you know, as a stripper, you well, definitely know how to take your clothes Ooh. off. So. No, oh, a... no! No, no! Sweet Lord Jesus, no! Do, Do it. it. And that's all you get for now. That's all I get. Ciao, ciao. Thank you. Ciao, ciao. She's going to piss off. I might get rid of you straight away. I'm Ben. Oh, this is the quirky guy. This guy looks interesting. How many Red Bulls has this guy had? <laughs> this is awesome. How are you feeling? I've done, like, three excited, three nervous poos already. Four <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> She's going, security, security! I wasn't going to come over and say I did one when I've actually done three. Security! Well, he's your type of guy. <laughs> I'd be like, great. we're going to get along. Oh, my goodness. You're gone, son. I thought I killed it. <laughs> <laughs> I like you. She doesn't want him. I'll get out with him. <laughs> Bet you this bloke getting that free nervous poos. Ooh. I like this one. Mr. Suave. Oh. Mr. <laughs> Swagger. So I've got a few make or break questions. Okay, okay. well, we're not. And these into could it. be deal breakers. Okay. So, first question Pineapple on a pizza or not? No. Yes. 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 Definitely yes. No. Okay. Listen, that's her. You don't like it? Fuck off. When you open the tomato sauce, uh -huh. does it go in the fridge or the pantry? Fridge. fridge. Pantry. Pantry. Oh. What questions are these? Pantry. Okay. Fridge. We've got to discuss this. It goes in the pantry. Pantry. Oh, what's wrong, is it? Don't you love like cold ketchup? tomato sauce? <laughs> Why do you like hot ketchup? You don't even buy ketchup. The ketchup I in the fridge the is mine. I in the fridge and I leave it in the fridge, but I, every single time I'm like, fuck, I have to use this for cold ketchup. <laughs> To love. to love. The cocktail party begins and the bachelors line up for Georgia's attention. Yeah, the boys formed a queue to talk to Georgia. And I mm. tried to skip the line, cut everyone off. Kind of felt bad, not really, but kind of, not really. He is the Kira of the bachelorette. Yeah. Do you like coriander? I'm a bit bored with your questions. You do this too, Matt. You ask too many questions. No, he asks silly questions. I ask great questions. No, you... what would you ask? Three yeah. people in the world to a dinner party, who would they be and why? If it ruins in, the whole won't, dish. They won't put it in a dish, but if it's in there, then I'm fine with that. He's getting the flick for sure. Evening, gentlemen. Welcome to your first rose ceremony. Who's going home? Carlos. No, no they might keep him Carlos and big eyes. Crazy eyes. Crazy eyes is gone. Oh, Carlos, Carlos, Carlos. I think Sam will go. Hopefully, the big smile and the blue eyes get me across the line. Please don't pick him. Ben. Yes. Yes. I am shocked. Ben. I'm not used to competing with other men for one girl. Usually, it's the other way around. There's usually about 30 girls and one magic man. Do not pick Carlos. Do not pick Carlos. But you can't take the Tiffany bracelet and not give him a rose. Yes, she can. Yes, she can. Sam. Oh, no. Thank you very much. My God. I can't believe those I two are gone. I told you Carlos was going. How's Carlos Shh. gone? I cannot. He's a dick, Dad. Tomorrow night. We're watching it tomorrow night. No, we're not. They get their shirts off. We're watching it tomorrow night. I found that really boring. I liked that there were so many hot guys. Bring it on. Bring it on. This is going to be a bloody good season. I'm hooked already. <laughs> on Tuesday night, the Jacksons prepared for Corey's new baby. What, what do you think you will be? Grandpa. Grandpa. <laughs> Brent, Dad. Grandpa. Was it grandpa? People are going to be holding out more for that than the baby's name. <laughs> and we debated another hot topic with SBS. Insight. Hi, I'm Jenny Brocky. Tonight on Insight, how old is too old to have a child? <laughs> We're not going to have that problem. Time to remind us about our biological clocks. Oh, shit, man. Got to get married and have kids. Kevin, how old are you now? 
76, 77 and, in February. And how old's your son? Six. <gasps> oh my God. What? Oh. Wow. Oh, sorry, what? It was only 70 years, the difference. Oh, Jesus, he looks like he's ready to die. Wow. Can't believe they're still having sex at 70. That's impressive. And age is nothing. Age never counted anything with me. Oh, please don't no. tell me he's a dad. Jesus. Ozzy's dad, Les Colley, is 97. He's. <gasps> Whoa. Bullshit. <gasps> Holy fuck balls, he's my idol. He's old enough to be Aussie's great great grandfather. Yeah, that is just absolutely ridiculous. How did it physically happen? He must be a virile old bastard. <laughs> oh, I might be the eldest father in Australia, but that's about all. He must have chat like a madman. They've got the same amount of teeth. Back again, he's like a blue fly. <laughs> Do you reckon they had a group discount on nappies? <laughs> You know, this makes me hopeful that I can still get an erection at 97. There was plenty of weighing up the pros and cons of fathering at an older age. You have adult children. How does fatherhood compare this time around? I never got the chance to grow up those two girls because when they went to work, to school, I'd be at work. This way, like, he's going to be there all day. Pick him up, drop him off at school, pick him up from school, play with him on the weekends, no working. Most kids these days are raised by their grandparents anyway. Yeah. Like, I was raised by my grandparents for a period of time because my parents were working so much. Yeah, yeah. I turned out fine. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin, you mentioned earlier that you have some serious health issues. Have you thought about the idea that Pierre might have to deal with loss when he's very young? Uh, yes, I, no, yes and no. I'm always torn with topics like this because they should have the right to have kids. Yes. But if he is already not in fantastic health, then the child might not have the best opportunities possible to grow. Does a child have the right to expect its parents to still be alive until that child reaches adulthood? But unfortunately, he's going to be exposed to illness and death at a really young age. And the thing is, he'll cark it tomorrow and then he's left his little kid behind. Yeah. That's pretty cruel. That's selfish, I reckon. The discussion then moved from the male perspective to the female. The average age of women in Australia getting pregnant is increasing, it's not decreasing. I think children are more for the women, not for the men. Nah. They're just a sperm donor. They're just a sperm donor, just a visitor. Physical requirement of the man, he's pretty much done in two to three minutes. Mary, how old were you when you started trying to have a baby? Um, 39. Oh! She's, um... Oh, Effie. Effie. Mary Custis, Effie. Yeah. I love her. Greeks on the roof. Acropolis now. Acropolis now. Why did you end up going to Greece for IVF? Greece eggs. I mean, they're in a recession. It would have been cheap, wouldn't they? <laughs> well, I'd done um, 15 IVFs in Australia. Oh, oh my God. My God. It was a long process for you, though, was. wasn't it? That was a decade. Of, of trying. Jeez, it's a lot to go through, isn't it? That's, that's somebody who really wants a baby, to go through all that. And I was 49 when I gave birth. Jamie was number 23. 23. You're really tempting fate, fate yeah. there and really messing with Mother Nature, I think. Greeks are different. We don't age like the rest of the world. Do you do the sums in your head? You know, when Jamie's 20, how old am I going to be? Yeah, of course. Death or the possibility of, of loss um, can make you live life in a much richer way. Yeah. Yes! But Dr Gino Pecoraro reminded everyone of the cold, hard facts. As you get older, it gets harder. Biology is cruel, um, not politically correct and doesn't care about the women's movement or your career. I'm getting stressed now. Stop it. I'm turning 28. And I'm 26. Should I just freeze my eggs? Maybe. Freezing your eggs just seems like such a rich person thing to do. It does. You can't even afford to buy organic eggs, let alone freeze, freeze yours. Eggs. Aussie, how old do you think it's too old? I think that it should be um, based purely on the individual's health. If they can look after, afford it, look after their kids, good, good luck to them. People are just selfish and just go out there and go, I want my own child. Have you thought about fostering? Have you thought about adopting? Like, it's your right to do it. But are you making the right decision for you or for the child? Yeah. I'm going for them. Go on, your old people. Go out and have root and have babies.
I know that I look pregnant. Could you imagine me pregnant? <laughs> <laughs> no. No? Could you imagine me now having another you one? You would be a ball breaker. Oh, no, I wasn't, You'd be actually. going, Faye, get me a bottle for the baby. <laughs> Faye, can, why are you there? Get me a nappy. <laughs> Faye. What's happening to us, Adamo? Uh, I don't know. We spend a lot of time on the couch. This is like the third Friday night in a row. I think it's like the tenth Friday night, to be honest. Life keeps to celebrate the end of the week, we watched Australia's longest-running lifestyle show, Better Homes and Gardens. Oh, nothing says Friday night like better homes and gardens. When I was a kid, my parents' backyard was my whole world. Building castles and whole cities out of my dad's bricky sand. But all of that doesn't even compare to this. Going into these woods, there have been stories about a dragon. Pete's dragon. dragon. That's what we're going to go see. Disney's Pete's Dragon is a ripping new film. Oh, God, they're always doing product placement, aren't they? It is better homes and gardens oh, and yeah. movies. No, I'm not fixing the stormwater for the suburb. How'd they go from that to that? <laughs> it's going to be a tunnel to get to the dragon's lair. Oh, right, OK. This is do-it-yourself, is it? Where the hell do you buy a concrete stormwater cinder block thing from? Cover it with soil so they've got two little hills to roll down. As a kid, this would be... Awesome. That'll be fun. I can have my afternoon siesta in it. I've cut my sleepers to fit the curve of the pipe. This all seems, one, very expensive, and two, very hard to do. In a little retaining wall, we'll hold our little mini wall together. Retaining wall? I think this may be the easiest do-it-yourself tutorial I've ever seen in my life. This is taking too long. Elliot, give us a hand. I could use him every week on the show. Huh. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> of course, no dragon's lair would be complete without a swing. These are going to be really important for levelling when I get this baby into the ground. Do it not yourself. Do it with Jesus. six other helpers. How much is this costing for DIY? My godfather. Shh. I'm watching them build. I want Dad to make it. Good luck with that. To decorate the area, Demi is making a dragon's egg. It's a bit like making a giant layered sponge cake. Wiggle, 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 wiggle. That doesn't look much like eggs. Have you seen a dragon egg before? No, I haven't. It needs a little bit of help from my rasp and my sauce. <laughs> no shit. <laughs> yeah, it looks like one hot mess, sweetheart. There we go. Nice and round. She said that. There's no way in hell she turned that bloody big mess into that. <laughs> Oh, wow. Smoke machine. That's cool. I'm sorry, kids, I've let you down. That's freaking yeah. awesome. Look at that. That's a disaster. Yeah. It's going to look shit in about three weeks' time. Apart from backyard makeovers, another stalwart is Dr Harry. What would you do? Dr Harry. See, this is why I watch this show. I love Dr Harry. If you came across a sick or injured bird... How old is Dr Harry? I thought he was dead. 73. Is he? He hasn't aged. I reckon he's been 73 for about 20 years. Dr Harry visits a bird rescue sanctuary in Queensland called Twinnies. Paula and Bridget are somewhat unique. They're identical twins. I find adult twins dressing the like very creepy. And you are identical. Yes. yes. Everything about you. Yes. Wow. We're like that. We're twins. Like that? Are we? We yeah. call this pelican, pelican paradise. paradise. See, they talk together. Do we talk together? Let's talk. Let's see if I. No, we don't. We're always telling each other to shut up. We're nothing alike. Like. You yes. love this, don't you? Yes, yes we, we do. do. We love it. No. They're in a freaking horror movie, man. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> it's like the twin girls are the bloody the shiny. They talk at the same time. time. Finishing each other's sentences. sentences. What's special about the pelican? Well, we'll look at them. them. They're, they're big, beachy, and they're beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at all those gooses. <laughs> what are these? We, we call, call them, them love bites. bites. Pelican love bites? Yeah, yeah that's, that's right. right. They're very sweet. They're very, very sweet. sweet. But, but don't. don't. Evie, stop, stop it. it. No, don't, seriously. seriously. It's so, so annoying. annoying. Hello, Pancho. You've eaten all your nuts. We're going to talk together. 
We, we don't, but we don't think together. You are the biggest fucking spoil sport. He's got a hook in his neck. It's a little red hook, but I can't feel the barb. Oh, look what they found. They found a hook in the swan's neck. Don't they um, dissolve? Dissolve? <laughs> Paula and Bridget have nursed some swans back to health and they are ready to be released back into the wild. There they go. Oh, look at that. I've never seen so much water. That's beautiful. Aww. I'm sorry I picked on them now. They're doing a lovely job. See you both later. Yes. Oh, look at Harry angling for a threesome. threesome. I nearly said menage a trois. <laughs> If you went shopping with Rach, you would just let her pick everything, wouldn't you? I have veto power, but she helps me choose. <laughs> Although, having said that, veto power has its limits, where it's like, you look great in it. I'd be like, how much is it? $400? I'll, I'll take it. <laughs> in Boulder, Colorado, the parents of six-year-old John Benet Ramsey say there's a child killer on the loose. Last week, Channel 9 had a rating success with a two-part special reopening one of the world's most infamous unsolved cases, John Benet Ramsey. Oh, do you remember this? It was everywhere on the news and the papers, everywhere when this happened. On December 26, 1996, at 5.52 a.m., six-year-old John Benet Ramsey was reported kidnapped by her mother. Later that day, she was found dead in her home. Unsolved murder. Because she did pageants, everyone thought they sexualised her. A poor family. The show assembles a cold case team to re-examine the evidence using new technology. This is real life law and order. The first piece of evidence is the emergency call made by John Bernays' mother. We have a kidnapping. Kidnapping. OK, what's your name? Are you Cassie Ramsey? I'm the mother. Oh, my God. Good goosebumps. Take a deep breath. Please, hurry, hurry, hurry. Cassie? Cassie? You wouldn't hang up the phone. That's strange. You're sending out that phone call for help. Yeah, it's weird, isn't it? For that phone to be hung up, you got to ask yourself why. Right? You definitely are not hanging up. You do not hang your phone up. But she's not thinking straight at the same time. I'd be hanging up so I could be running around the house looking for the kid. But she did not hang up the phone. In the background, we <gasps> heard some voices. Some more voices. What'd they say? Tell us. Oh, wow. I think I hear a man say, we're not speaking, speaking to, to you. you. We're not speaking to you. I did not hear anything at all. I think that's John Ramsey's voice. But who would he be talking to? Well, let's go on to the next part. Oh, my God. What did you find? Oh, I hear it now. Yeah. It sounds like a smaller voice, though. That's the son. The what brother. Are... This is interesting, isn't it? Mill, you watch CSI and Lord and Order all the time. What's your prediction here? Oh. Jerry's still out. Six hours after the police arrive, John Bonet's body is discovered in the basement by her father. So it took him that long to search the house. There's something fishy about this. Statements that were made said that John called, called out, out that first. she was here before he turned the light on. So he went straight to the basement? Straight there. But how does he know? How do you see without the light? Mm -hmm. As I recall, he's never been asked those questions. He's never been asked? First thing you do in a homicide case, if you have witnesses, is you separate them, you take them someplace, and you get a statement. Right. That's Cops 101. Even I know that. And the only problem is they didn't so, get interviewed by well, the they police. they didn't. Right. This has been a fuck-up from the beginning. A very poorly run crime scene. Sleep. It was my belief that the philosophy that was kind of laid out for the police department was we have to treat them with kid gloves. Treat them with kid gloves. That's the philosophy. Where's the philosophy coming from? The top. Maybe he, like, knew the police department. Something very odd is going on. Yeah. Next, the team examines the autopsy of John Bonet's body. Well, she had a blow to the head. Hit across the head. She got bopped on the head. She was strangled. To make believe that was the cause of death, she already was brain dead. So there was two totally different injuries to her. The blow to the head put killed it, her, yeah. and they put the rope around to make it look like she was strangled. A large metal torch was found on the dining table. So would it take tremendous strength to, to do no. this? Look at that. Is that that kid's skull? It's hard to look at the evidence, isn't it? Yeah, it's tough. Mm, I just think that's a little girl. She's a heavy object with three batteries in it. Could be an adult, it could be a child that did it. Could be a child, could be the brother. We thought it would be good if we actually brought in a child who was about 10 years old to actually do the demonstration with him. Sure. Gee. Gee. It's around about there. Okay. Are you ready? Yep. 
That's just creepy. It just seems a bit unnecessary. Mm. <gasps> we'll just take it off here. We're just going to peel this back. Wow. And you can yeah. see how it's broken. It's very similar to the type of break that we saw on Jean Bonnet. Who killed Jean Bonnet Ramsey? Oh. oh. I hope we find out. On Tuesday, we were back on the couch. I've got to know the answer to this. It's killing me. The experts review footage of the interview with John Bonet's brother, Burke, conducted two weeks after her death. So what do you think happened? I know what happened. <laughs> I know what happened. I, I think that someone took her very quietly and, and then maybe took a knife out and went, you know, or something mm. like that. Or maybe a hammer in mm. the head, maybe. You see that? That's, that's a physical demonstration. Oh, my God. Yeah. It gives me chills. Yeah. Do you think there's something wrong with the little boy? I think it's, something's wrong with the entire lot. The most compelling piece of evidence is a piece of pineapple. So she completely digested her dinner, and after that, she then ate this pineapple. Correct, that's correct. But she was supposed to be in bed. The experts believe a late-night snack was the catalyst for John Bonet's death. Isn't it possible that John Bonet came down and saw that Burke was eating this and took one piece? Yep, that's what I would do. We all do that. You probably would have been upset about her trying to snag a piece of pineapple out of anger. He may have struck her with that flashlight. I think we all agree on that. Yes. Yes. Yeah, Horrible, isn't it? Mm. But I don't think he deliberately did it to kill her. He was just jealous and angry and spur uh -huh. on the moment, yeah. And it just happened. Why didn't they just say that? Mm. In the end, this was about two parents deeply cared for the daughter they lost and wanted to protect the child they had remaining. The truth will come out soon. What's happening now? No charges can be filed in the John Bonet case without new evidence. Mm. So you can't bring it to justice. I've got a little treat for you. What have you got? Look. Oh. Fairy floss. <clears throat> and you reckon I don't look after you? Would you want a bit? No. Look. Oh, <laughs> it was fairy floss and movie night on Sunday as we heralded the 25th anniversary of the classic road trip, Thelma and Louise. I love Thelma and Louise. <laughs> <laughs> I've never even heard of it. I know what it's about. Another classic movie I haven't seen. I can't believe you've never seen this. It's one of those movies that everyone always references yeah. or talks about, but yeah. I've never got around to watching. Who have I? The movie follows two friends who head out of town for a girls' weekend. Do you know what? This is pretty big for that day to have two women starring in the role. There was quite the misogynistic backlash on this as well. Oh, there would have been. Mom. Oh, the original selfie. That's where the selfies came from. Because one of my friends, she was like, let's do a film on Louise. I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> get the um. You said your me was going to get out of town and for once just really let our hair down. Well, darling, look out, because my hair is coming down. Well, here we go. Dance time. The ladies let loose, but Thelma soon finds herself in trouble. Damn it, All right, let me go now. Come on. Right, go on. No, no. What a scumbag. You dirtbag. Where's your knee? Put it up in his crutch. Louise is going to wonder where I am. Fuck Louise. Hey. Oh. Oh. Oh, my God. Shit. This is much more graphic than I thought. I was not mentally prepared for this. You let her go, you fucking asshole, or I'm gonna splatter your ugly face all over this nice car. Just shoot the fucker. Kill him. I would not hesitate to kill him. Bitch! I should have gone ahead and fucked her. Oh! Yes! Go, Louise! Well, you had that coming. Get the car. Oh, Jesus Christ. I thought this was a fun chick flick. I think we ought to tell the police. Tell him what, Thelma? Just what do you think we should tell him, huh? Yeah, people you would say she asked man for it. your own fault. I mean, people say that shit now, don't they? Oh, well, she shouldn't have wore that dress. That's sad, but true. Thelma. I'm going to Mexico. In over their heads and on the run, Thelma's fortune changes at a pit stop. 
Shit! Sorry. Darling! <gasps> Hello. And here we have Brad Pitt. Is that him? Yeah. No. No? You're OK. Wasn't this his first movie? I know, but he was good looking. You all have a good day, all right? I can't believe Rangelina are over. Oh, my God. If the two most beautiful people in the world can't stay together, what hope have the rest of us got? Probably some hope. I'm kind of stuck here like stink on stinks. Holy shit balls, denim and denim. Who wears double denim today? I thought I did double D well. He does double D real well. He's beautiful. Take me, break me, make me a man. Brad Pitt's character, JD, jumps at the chance to make an impression on Thelma. Uh, you, sir. Yeah, you do the honors. Take that cash. Oh, put on the hat. Oh, my God. Oh, man, the hairdryer looks so hot right about now. Look how gorgeous he is. You reckon? Well, definitely. Look at his body. It's chiselled. How embarrassing. She's, like, wearing the worst Nana undies. She hasn't trimmed for a while. Jesus, look how bulky it is. Is that Jesus her Christ. undies? She's like, that yeah, that's her bone. It's not a bone. That's just you don't have a bone in the middle of your Here. vagina. Yeah, you do. I'm not... Do you want to feel mine? No, not particularly. <laughs> just watching Brad Pitt be near a vagina makes me feel weird. Like a good weird. Yeah, good weird. But naughty boy JD was after more than just another notch on his belt. Shit! So he steals from them. Aww. Oh, well, at least you got an orgasm. You just paid $6,700 for a route. <laughs> Fucking Brad Pitt was expensive even back yeah, then. Very expensive. Okay. What are they going to do now? With no money. So this is when they turn gangsta? Yeah. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is a robbery. Now, if nobody loses their head, nobody will lose their head. This is like our mum's going on a crime spree. You know what? They've killed someone and robbed one store. They may as well just keep doing it, huh? They may as well start selling crack on the corner. I mean, they're in trouble as it is. Thank you, Founder Colin. Maybe. Maybe. The call of the world. Woo! Shit, this is such girl power. Yeah. Girl power. With newfound confidence, Thelma and Louise aren't putting up with anything. You say you're sorry. Fuck that! <laughs> oh! <laughs> Called it! Oh! Called it! That's Effie! Ed Dumb's a bloke. But not all like that. The ride of a lifetime comes crashing down when the cops catch up with them. Oh, oh shit! shit. Someone's going to come in and rescue them. Brad Pitt. Yeah. Where's Brad Pitt? Let's not get caught. What are you talking about? Let's keep going. What are they doing? Oh, my God. Why would the road lead into the cliff? Would you throw yourself off a cliff? Yeah. Rather than get caught? Yep. No, I wouldn't. Oh. Did not see that coming. I, I could have sworn they were just going to jail. Good movie. Yeah. I just got goosebumps all over. But you know what? They went out on their own terms. Yeah. It's sort of awesome, but sort of sad. Could have done with more Brad Pitt, though. Just a bit more. Yeah, a bit more. Before the Silbreys went on holidays last week, Emmy tested her new hearing aid. <laughs> you turning it up? I'm just going to see what it does. Is it working? Is it working, Mum? <laughs> oh, it did. It worked. Hearing sorted, they then watched Nan's favourite show, Who Do You Think You Are? You guys love this show. Oh, it's a great I show. I do, yeah. Where a featured celebrity goes on the trail to find out their family's history. We've all come from somewhere, haven't we? Well, so this is Mum and Dad. Yeah. Looks yeah. like you. So who do you think you are tonight? It's about Peter Garrett. Do you know him, girls? No. No. He used to be in a band. Midnight Oil. Midnight Oil. 
greatest rock and roll band in Australia ever. Do you know any of their songs? No. How do we dance when our beds are burning? Yeah. All these songs were about the government, about the um, environment. They were very political, which was good. But he used to dr dance like he's had, you know, 50 cans. <laughs> In 2004, Peter went from political activist to politician. Like Lionel Schwarzenegger did. A little bit different. He was going to be a Greens candidate, but he ended up as a Labor candidate. Finding out about his grandparents is particularly important to Peter. My dad died when I was reasonably young. And then a couple of years later, uh, our house uh, that my mum and a couple of us were living in in Sydney burnt down and she perished in the fire. <gasps> wow. His mum. If your parents died early, you probably wouldn't get to hear all your family history and stories. No. Huh? Peter has found the first clue to his grandmother's past. 1907. Leaving the Fremantle Wharf. Mm. The passenger list. Ah, there she is. Bateson Emily, hospital nurse, female. Yes. Ah, she's on her way to Perth. You're going to have to go there and find out, I think. I'd love to do all this type of stuff, but we just won't have any records. No. In Vietnam, during the Vietnam War. They had to leave everything behind. My ancestors married the children of convicts. Ned Kelly's in our family. What do you mean? Yeah. Since when? No, he Actually, does Actually, I not. can't remember. No, there's something the about Ned Kelly. I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> I'm going to ring Mum and ask her if Ned Kelly's in the family. Kate, she doesn't know what she had for lunch today. She <laughs> won't know anything about Ned Kelly. I've been told there's some black Irish, which is Spanish, who emigrated to Ireland. Hi. Uh, hi. Ned Kelly, is, are they in our family? Yes, it's on Dad's side. Never heard bigger BS in my life. The trail takes Peter from Perth to Dora Island off the coast of WA, where his grandmother, nurse Emily, was stationed for five years. This is where she was. Yeah. She wow. would have stood here over 100 years ago. Yeah. When you know your ancestors have stepped on that same soil, there's something there that... The ghosts of the past. Yeah, the ghosts of the past. With the help of a historian, Peter discovers the island has a dark past. In 1908, the state government made those islands into lock hospitals in response to a sort of a panic that there was venereal disease in the Aboriginal population. What's venereal disease? STD? STI, but yeah. When the lady garden gets a bit nasty. Syphilis, highly contagious and often fatal. Is that what it does? Gives mm. you oh, I thought it was downstairs. But that's when they're full blown. They were brought from the bush. They were collected by police. They weren't collected by a doctor. Oh. Oh, my God. So that's how they rounded them <gasps> up. How can you treat someone like that? I oh, know. Yes. Surely it had spread from the white population to the Aboriginal population. Yes. So were they assessed? No. No. So some of them may or may not have been diseased. There was no. nothing wrong with them. Just imagine you're just enjoying the land and these people come along... And claim and your, your home as their, their own. Home. And then put you in chains. Another part of the untold story of first contact. This is so boring, honestly. Brittany, this what? is Australian history, my friend. This is a memo. So they're using a drug to see whether it would cure syphilis. So the island becomes a hospital and a laboratory. So they're using the indigenous people mm -hmm. as basically guinea pigs. Sad, isn't it? This is an unnamed person. This is number 13. Went steadily downhill and died. They didn't have names. They had numbers. It's a horror movie. Yeah, it really is. And then we have a, such a hard time of saying sorry to people. But it was Peter's grandmother who stood up to the authorities and stopped the testing. They're like whistleblowers. They stopped it. They stopped it. Imagine having a grandma like that. That's a brave act. And these women certainly were staunch defenders of the rights of people. And I've taken away some echoes that come through their life to me. and. It's a reassuring thing to find that it's there in your own family. Next time on... It must be in his genes, because he has done a lot for the Indigenous, hasn't he? Yeah. I think of the Beds of Burning song, and that's all about the Aboriginals and what we've done to them. You're bored? Yeah. Aren't you intrigued where you come from? Huh? I come from you two. Yeah, is that all you care about? Don't neglect my side of the family history when you get old. Right. Pass it on to Luca, make sure he knows all about it, please. Sure. OK.